So, first of all, David. Yes. What, have you got a cup of tea at hand? Uh, of course I do, yeah. What tea are you drinking? Uh, just your standard breakfast tea. Standard breakfast? I'm uh, sipping on a Yorkshire tea. Or oh, Yorkshire tea. I, I thought you were more of an Earl Grey man myself. But... I do, do enjoy an Earl Grey, but I've got, uh, I'm have got i feeling the Yorkshire this evening. Especially when we're about to talk about England as well. So Of, of course, yeah. All tea, is, uh, all tea is welcome. Exactly. Wonderful. Uh, so, England. We've both completed... I mean, there's many achievements for England, but the, I think the big one's obviously Anglophile. That's the one everybody wants. That is the biggest and probably the most interesting achievement for it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's down as a a hard achievement on the wiki, I believe. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not sure if I'd agree with that. What, what what would, you, would, would you put it below or like, uh, like harder than that? I would say I'd put it as a medium achievement. I think the only thing that categorises it as hard for me is in the achievement is probably the HRE missions. The HRE, and I, I heard from a little, uh, a little birdie that you uh, got quite lucky with that one as well. <laughs> yeah, mate, I um, I had no part in it whatsoever, but it dismantled itself during the religious wars. Right. Okay. I, um, I, I, I was obviously, as you know, I was streaming it, and I was for a hundred years prior. I was coming up with tactics of right. I need to fight this, uh, <laughs> this elector, this elector, and I'll chain all the wars. So it's seven different wars, but no, the. They, they dismantled themselves from oh, the help God, government. You, you lucky, lucky you. How, how, how did you do it in the... Your... I had to take up coalitions, wars, and various <laughs> other things to get all of the electors and the um, HRE emperor in on the same war. Wow. That was a nightmare. Wow. And that's you why have to siege that's why I, down all the electors, don't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. I, and that's why it took me until about 1750 to complete the Anglophile. Ouch. Yeah. So I think with that... That's probably what takes it into the hard category. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, perhaps if you want to go down the whole diplomatical route, oh that's, yeah, I mean, that's that's a bit too hard for me. That's, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I could I could have done it, but I kind of pissed off the entire HRE <laughs> <laughs> to begin with, so they were never going to vote for me. So I had so, to do it militarily. So uh, yeah. other than that, I think it's plain sailing. To be honest, I'll, yeah. I would say. I mean, the start is obviously relatively hard because you've got France. Uh, bordering you and then the surrender of main event you can either give it up or fight it but yeah it's a good good job you mentioned that actually it's about to move on to the opening moves Ooh, open um moves. do you want to go through your opening strategy for England? well I've, I've got two strategies one is to give up main and just go you can have it and then build up allies like castile aragon or burgundy and then try and get them to sort of attack port uh, portugal france afterwards um or release Elencon as a vassal and then grant them the province of uh, Maine so you never actually get the surrender of Maine event. Mm -hmm. Similar to what I did. Did you just release Elencon and give them Maine? Or? Yeah, just Elencon. Because uh, in my one, I everything that's not on the British Isles, I gave away to Normandy and Gascony. Ah, right. So on the mainland Europe, I had, well, obviously I had my vassals, but I uh, gave away the land to vassals and enabled scuttage. Oh, yeah. So yeah. France literally couldn't siege down anything of mine. <laughs> my my navy was superior, and all they could do was stand in their land and just watch angrily from uh, <laughs> across the English Channel. So they couldn't participate in the Scottish war whatsoever. So I think that's quite a uh, tasty tactic. Very frustrating for the French. So, uh, exactly. So that enabled me to... I exploited development as well, because yeah. uh, you know one of the early missions is that if you get to force limit, you get a um, subjugation CB on Scotland. Oh yeah. So I exploited manpower out of every development, and obviously the decrease in development lowered my max manpower. Yeah, yeah. Which now wanted me to complete the mission on like day one, oh. especially with um, giving away my land to vassals. They that took away from my total development and my force limit. So I, I got the CB for subjugation for Scotland on day one. So as soon as it, what was, what's it, like the 12th of December you can declare? Yeah, yeah. I declared on them straight away with no <laughs> allies. Um, right. France was called into their defence, but all they could do was just uh, throw baguettes across the English Channel. <laughs> and then um, I, I sieged down the whole of Scotland, killed all their men. No, I'll tell a lie. I let them cross into uh, Ireland so they could <laughs> sit on the pale. I then blocked the uh, the strait for them to get back from Ireland so all their men were stuck over in Ireland. 
And uh, once I completed, completely sieged the whole of Scotland, I joined my stack together of like 30k men and then just walked straight to Paris. <laughs> the, the French had like 24,000 men, so they didn't want any of it. Yeah. And uh, siege down Paris, which obviously gives you the CB to um, vassalize France in the next war. And then I just white pieced them. And then from there, I just built up allies as, yeah. as you did, ready for the big the big old fight. Yeah, I genuinely thought you were a nice person before this. And now it turns out you, you're quite cruel and savage. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, no. my, it's my outer layer. It's when you get to know me that I'm yeah. really, you got really a sly and being thick, deep, thick deep. skin. And then it, uh, you get <laughs> down below that and it's, oh dear, dark depths of hell. <laughs> exactly. So uh, what, what are we talking about being horrendous to the French. I'm oh, yeah. assuming you, what I mean, we both had somewhat similar opening strategies, but did you just prepare for the big old French war by building up loads of allies, promising land and going down that route? Uh, I did, yes, basically. I mean, I didn't think I was going to do like win the first war, and I actually did win the first war, so I got the, I, I basically reduced them in size to get the PU, and then, and then sort of uh, granted the provinces back to them once I had the PU over them. So it was, a, it was a really nice. But there is another tactic I've heard somebody use, and that was to, before the Surrender of Bain event, ally Castile, Aragon. I think you have to do a couple of restarts, which I don't personally like doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know you don't either. But um, you can ally Castile, Aragon, Burgundy, Austria, anybody who will, and then promise them land from the, from the main event. Because it doesn't pop up. Saying you can call your allies in. You can still manually call them in, yeah. I believe, yes. So you can actually win the first war and get them in a PU in the first war. So so. It's effectively what I did in the second. As I said, I subjugated Scotland and then white pieced out France. Yeah. Um, but in the second war, I think I allied Austria. Yeah. Um, who else did that? I think I allied Aragon. Both promised them land. Yeah. At that point, I think I think Austria even got the um, Burgundy inheritance by that point, so they boarded France. Yeah. Um, and then called Aragon and Austria and obviously myself in. I think I disabled Scottage for my vassals as well so they could join in. Yeah. Join, join in the party and just um, obviously subjugated France, which causes quite a large amount of AE. So I, I did have a yeah. coalition war after that as well. <laughs> it does. It does hurt. Yeah. It but when, you, when you're allied, when you've, well, you've got France as a vassal. Yeah. You've got Scotland. You've got Aragon. You've got Austria. It's uh, how, how did... a few. How did you fare with the liberty desire with Scotland and France? Because I, I, I took influence ideas first. Ah, okay, so you reduced massively that. Massively helped. Yeah, I didn't plan to, but when I when I easily vassalized France and Scotland, I thought, oh, this is yeah. nice here. It's so I took influence ideas first, followed by admin, which worked quite well with each other. Yeah. So what? So speak, speak, speaking speaking of which, which well, like which ideas did you go for like the whole campaign then? Because I know it's probably hard to remember, but. There's various ways you can go, isn't there? You can... Yeah. My first three, I took influence first, followed by admin, mm. then exploration, and then quality. Yeah. And then I kind of just took what I needed as and when I went along. Yeah. So um, did you, but... you, you took the influence purely because you had both of those in a like a vassal personal yeah, union yeah. sort of thing. And uh, at that point, I, I thought I'm going to go for a vassal heavy game because the British ideas have got diplo annexation cost. Yeah. I was taking admin anyway for the land, which policy with influence is 20% diplo annexation cost. Mm. So uh, after all the math, it worked out that Britain with full ideas, policies and whatnot and the parliament mechanics, you can get like minus 85% diplo <laughs> annexation cost. So oh, I think I, I think when I finally integrated France, it only cost me like 303 diplo power. That's ridiculous. So um, yeah, I did go for a vassal heavy game. I, I eventually vassalized, uh, vassalized Aragon and released uh, Galicia oh, as yeah. a vassal as well. Yeah, that really, really cheap reconquest land. Yeah, exactly. And then you can just accept wars and you don't have to do anything yourself. It's uh, yep. quite enough. What ideas did you kick things off with? Uh, I think I went exploration first, if I'm honest, and just tried to get in the colonial game. Could you um, uh, reach anywhere? Uh, yeah, I went, well, I, took, I went to war with Denmark for the uh, Orkneys and then took uh, right. Iceland, Iceland in the process mm -hmm. and then proceeded to go that kind of route. Because that's one way to cut out Denmark from doing their own um, exploration. But um, yeah, I think I went exploration. Then I went something. I think I might have gone influence as well because I was suffering a lot with uh, Liberty Desire. Yeah. And then I definitely went admin um, 
later on. But uh, I think the ideas after that, you kind of you kind of fine with taking whatever, aren't you? Yeah, and you just need must, I suppose, because exactly. I I had land everywhere and I wanted soldiers everywhere, so I went quantity, even though I didn't really need to. Yeah, and just stuff like that. I think I went offensive just to speed things up because at that point the achievement was done. It was just a matter of time. Yeah, so I went, I went offensive to clean things up and stuff like that. But yeah. um, I was going to say, yeah, I think I, cause despite going exploration third, I only colonized one province in the whole of the Caribbean. But <laughs> for the I I eventually got the whole of the Caribbean, but that was over the course of like four Portuguese wars. <laughs> well, I absolutely stomped them and just kept on stealing provinces. So I don't think you need to get... I know some people have said, oh, take expiration, then expansion. No. I don't think... I think by the time you get France and Scotland and a PU, yeah. you can just beat up the uh, competition. I think if you're if you're going for the achievement, I think you're right. You don't need to take it no. early. If you're going for full-on uh, uh, as much expansion as you can, yeah, then maybe take it earlier, but... If- if you're as I cruel as me, you just yeah. steal things. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> obviously you want your own culture with everything, and uh, so your colonies work the best mm-hmm. and yeah. whatever. But yeah. speaking uh, of a uh, culture, which reminds me, what uh, religion did you go? I went Anglican because oh, I felt. So you're, I see you're a man of taste. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a few suggestions to go Protestant because it's everyone considers it the better religion. Yeah. Um, however, I thought if you play in England, it's not many chances. You oh, you've to got go to Anglican, isn't it? You've got to stick with it. Come on, it's a, it's a unique yeah. thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you get another achievement with it—the chop chop one. If that's if you're going on achievement, then you might as well pick everything up. But you, oh, of course, yeah, you can. I mean, um, I, c- I couldn't get that because I uh, I don't know why, but I just uh, sucked at getting that one. But yeah, no, oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> other than that, uh, there's a few other decisions and events, somewhat flavour to England. I didn't deal with any. The War of the Roses. I think it didn't happen for like a hundred years because I kept on getting air, so I was quite lucky. Oh, yeah, and the, um, what's the second one? The Civil War, the English Civil War. Yep. I was like constantly at plus three stability, so I never had to deal with that. So I haven't oh, got much experience with that. I'm not sure what happened in your... See, I don't, I don't know whether this... You, you got the HRE. You didn't get the War of the Roses. You didn't get the Civil War. I'm a lucky boy. I, I had to do all three. <laughs> <laughs> and how are they? Are they manageable or...? Uh, the first, the War of the Roses, happened pretty much when I was at war with France, so that was not manageable whatsoever. And I, I did want to cry at some points, but uh, no, a cup of tea got me through that one, so I was happy. Mm. Um, but yeah, they are manageable; they are fine, but it, it does uh, does tax you a little bit. And how did you find the game once you was 100, 150 years in? Did you Quite- find it? It started to get easier, or was quite it quite easy? Climb, right? Quite yeah, easy. I, yeah. I think the main struggle was the first 150 years. Mm. I think uh, the transition from early game into mid slash late game is probably dealing with um, the Ottomans for me. Yeah, because the HRE was dismantled thanks to no effort of my own. <laughs> France, France was France was mine, but Iberia was essentially mine. I'd united the whole of Great Britain, colonized. A pr- a lot of places but it was with the i believe one of the missions is to get like the egypt region Alex- alexandria isn't yeah, it? yeah and it was it was dealing with the ottomans to grab what i needed did you have to find the ottomans for that then well i cut them off i cut them off but they were very hostile and they were still larger than me i'm not sure if i had to fight them in the end i believe i did after like 200 years when i was superior right yeah but I can imagine for a lot of people that didn't get that don't get as lucky as me with the whole HRE. I didn't have to deal with War of the Roses, Civil War. I vassalized France quite early. If I was five years slower, ten years slower, they would have had Alexandria, and that would have been nasty. Yeah, I mean, I I managed to get it when the Mamluks had it, and then the Ottomans didn't threaten me mm-hmm. that much, so I was quite lucky in that regard. And I managed to get all my trade companies set up before the Ottomans had even got theirs anywhere near. So I guess that's the beauty of taking exploration first as yeah, well. You get, you get yeah. that colonial range a bit sooner. Mm. Um, and that's, a, that's the thing with England. They, they've got very good uh, abilities and ideas, but when it comes to actual troops on the ground, they're not particularly amazing. I think I, I charged into a lot of battles thinking I was stronger than I was, and I was like, oh, this, uh, this isn't yeah. going so well. 
I think I think I came out of playing a Mewar game who ha- who can have up to 135 discipline mm-hmm. into an English game <laughs> mm-hmm. where they are at, where they rely on their ships because their men are like paper. Yeah, yeah exactly. But apart from the uh, the Ottomans, once the Ottomans are dealt with, there's no one that can really challenge you. I mean, no. Ming was the only other, I suppose, threatening power. But even on that front, what they're going to do, march their troops all the way from China to try and get across the English Channel. It's just, exactly. Oh, you've got a better navy than them. Yeah. And it's just not feasible for them to even think about to collect. How would they even get a CB? I don't know. Yeah, I had trouble with Ming, actually. You uh, had trouble with Ming. I'd yeah, because Ben Bengal, which you need to take, don't you, isn't it? West, yes, yes. West Bengal, I think. Um, they actually became a tributary of Ming. Hmm. And, I, and I felt very strongly against this and had to fight them. Uh, twice to get the land I wanted, which was <laughs> frustrating. But and how did it you know. go? Is it simple? Oh, war I mean, I mean, it, uh... it was quite easy at that point. Ming's mm-hmm. Ming's troops weren't great, and I had yeah, quite good allies. Al- I had good allies, so yeah, yeah. And I suppose you could cause a Ming plosion if you just parked your navy on their doorstep. <laughs> I could have done. Yeah, I didn't think about it at the time, but that is one possible tactic you could very easily do. Definitely. And uh, in conclusion. I would say it's probably one of the funniest achievements I've I've done. I would certainly recommend them yeah. to anyone. It's it's one of the achievements. I get bored quite halfway through games sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those achievements where I could possibly go up to the end of the game having yeah. completed the achievement. I still may revisit. I think I've got like 70 years left on my England one. Yeah. <clears throat> I may just go and revisit and complete it because it was so enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got many of the other achievements, but it's very... I find them one-dimensional. It's, right, the goal is to own this region or to hold these provinces of England. It's like, what is the 47 missions? Yeah. It's like a big race against time to get the checklist completed. And I, yeah. I thought it was quite nice. It's like, quite, it's, like the, it. it's like my Wales achievement I just did recently. Right. I took, I took Paris, I took Rome, I took all the places I needed to take, and then I was done. Yeah. And I, didn't want, I, mean. I didn't want to continue it, but it was Anglophile. Yeah. I feel like it, it makes England so much more enjoyable to play. Massively. And they're not yeah. they're not the same. Like it's not like oh conquer here, then conquer here, then conquer here. There's a few little curveballs thrown in with the trade missions and the oh, colonizing yeah. and the the um, Indian trade company, dealing with the HRE. Or or not in your case. Or I'm not, not I'm not I'm not gonna forgive you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, other than that, I'd thoroughly recommend it. Yeah. So uh, do you believe there's anything we've missed? Um, I think we've uh, had a nice little. I don't. I don't think. I don't think there's anything we've missed. But maybe. Uh, maybe like the way releasing Wales or releasing Northumberland. You know, you can play as other nations mm. inside mm. England. But I don't know. Oh Scot- yeah, you could do it's Scotland. Scotland, Scotland all the way. Sure. Scotland all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Half no, Scottish. I've that... got to represent. <laughs> I think we've uh, rounded up nicely. And as I say that, I'm about to take my final cup of sip of tea. So any oh, closing yeah. words, David? Um, custard creams are the best dunkers. Ooh, I would, I would say hard knobs, but we'll agree to disagree. Other than that, guys, thank yep. you for watching and new episodes coming soon. Thank you. To Take Papa. care, everyone. Bye-bye.